Hello and welcome to In-Depth, I'm Tina Jha. As a peace-loving country, India has always sought to allay the apprehensions of the world community about its nuclear program. Which is why successive governments have made it a point to reiterate their commitment to the doctrine of no first use of nuclear weapons by India. But in pursuing its nuclear policy with great determination, India has always been unambiguous that there will be no compromise with national security or sovereignty. Accordingly, it equipped itself as a nuclear power, holding many operational missiles in its arsenal, including the most advanced nuclear-capable intercontinental missile and the fastest supersonic cruise missile. In today's edition of In-Depth, we look at India's nuclear program, the beliefs that have guided it and the policy that governments have refined and followed since independence. So what exactly is India's nuclear policy? How relevant is it in today's age? And will there be a change in the policy? These are a few questions that are being increasingly asked in the past few years. Let's try to answer them. After India conducted its first nuclear test, Pokhran 1, on the 18th of May 1974, it became the first confirmed nuclear nation outside the five permanent members of the UN Security Council. The Indian government claimed the test was a peaceful nuclear explosion, but in reality, it was an accelerated nuclear program. Even after the second nuclear test in 1998, India maintained that its nuclear program was meant for peace and self-defense. India also maintained that it will never initiate a nuclear strike, which is the basis of our nuclear policy. As uh, 70s and 80s came along, India realized that its neighbors were pursuing very robust nuclear, military nuclear policy in the, in the military domain. And so gradually then what it, uh, it resulted into, India also rethinking its abhorrence towards, uh, to, uh, towards the nuclear weapons and bringing practical elements into its nuclear policy. So in 1998, uh, then Atal Bihari Vajpayee government decided that it was time for India to conduct nuclear tests and declare itself a nuclear weapon state. So therefore, India's nuclear policy over a long period of time uh, has been a function of both idealism and realism. Idealism uh, towards global uh, politics where it wanted to strive for nuclear disarmament. Realism keeping in mind the constraints of India's own national security interests and how to preserve those national security interests in a very hostile regional environment. Although India's no first use policy has often been questioned, it became a major issue in the 2014 Lok Sabha elections, when the BJP's election manifesto said the party will consider amendments that are deemed necessary in the light of changes in the world of nuclear policy. Ever since it came to power with a huge majority in 2014, the government has initiated discussions on nuclear policy once. But given that it can bring about changes in its foreign and defence policy, it is only logical to expect a change in nuclear policy as well. India's nuclear policy is a defensive policy where India has, uh, I will use the word, produced nuclear weapons and weapon delivery platforms in order to ensure that we have got a sufficient deterrence mechanism available. India is totally against thinking also of using nuclear uh, material as a weapon mode. So India considers nuclear weapons as a matter of a deterrence. The big question is, what is the relevance of the no first use policy in today's age? India's neighbours, Pakistan and China are both nuclear capable and in terms of nuclear technology, nations with nuclear weapons like North Korea are also not too far behind India. But our biggest concern is the coalition between Pakistan and China as well as the role of non-state actors or terrorists in Pakistan. The adoption of no first use policy proves that India is a responsible nuclear power and because of it, India's nuclear program has also received universal acceptance. India uh, has not been a part of the NPT uh, and a lot of other groups that govern the nuclear security architecture. Uh, now India is gradually entering into the fray after the US-India nuclear deals. India is widely recognized by the world as a de facto nuclear weapon state despite it not being a part of the NPT. So that has changed, that India can now trade in, um, in, in the global markets. Uh, in, in, in nuclear technology. India is seen as a responsible stakeholder in the global nuclear regime. 
uh, India can also uh, work with other like-minded countries in managing the nuclear uh, security architecture. So several things have changed in that regard. But India's nuclear policy in, in terms of its own logic of being uh, uh, driven by deterrence, uh, by second strike capability, I think that would, uh, in the near future, that's unlikely to change because that has served India well. So should India change its no first use policy? Keeping in mind India's proximity with the Trump administration, its historic ties with Russia and the changing conditions in Southwest Asia, if India does give such a declaration, potentially it looks like India will have little opposition. While there are indications of change in policy, in future this might prove to be harmful, especially since India is trying to get a membership to the nuclear suppliers group. It's true that every policy should be reviewed with changing times. But let's make these changes according to our needs and not under international pressure. With input from Lina Sharma, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Maintaining harmony with national security and peaceful coexistence with other countries has always been India's priority. With terror threats from neighboring nations and despite international pressure, India has maintained that its nuclear program is for national security. Let's know more about India's nuclear doctrine and when it was formulated. After independence, India had declared that it will not be involved in the race to make nuclear bombs. But international circumstances and national security forced us to change our opinion. While inaugurating the Apsara swimming pool reactor on 20th January 1957, then Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru said India will not misuse nuclear energy. But after his death, a series of international events significantly affected India's nuclear policy. Taking a view of the security conditions, then Prime Minister Lal Bahadur Shastri freed India from the commitment of not making nuclear weapons. He emphasized that policies should always be forward-looking and variable. During Atal Bihari Bajpayee's period, when India decided to announce officially that we have got no first-use policy, uh, India did the first test of nuclear weapons during early 1970s and subsequently we tested weapons during 1998, 20 years back. After that, India has put a moratorium on nuclear testing. That means India has announced on its own that now we are not going to test the nuclear weapons also. So from that point of view, what India has done is that India has developed nuclear weapons. India is satisfied that yes, it has got nuclear weapons and India is in the process of developing the weapon delivery platforms. Already India has successfully developed its missile system. Change in India's nuclear policies was witnessed in 1965 when India told the Disarmament Commission that it would not accept the Non-Proliferation Treaty. With regard to the international control of nuclear energy, India has always emphasized on two things. First, freedom of economic use of a nuclear power source should be for everyone. And secondly, it should be linked to the disarmament. If we look at India's nuclear development program, it is clear that India's nuclear policy and nuclear energy program have been for a peaceful purposes. For this, the Atomic Energy Act 1948 and 1962, Institute of Fundamental Research in 1945 and the establishment of the Atomic Energy Commission in 1948 are vital. Uh, we have had a very uh, robust civilian nuclear program, which then later morphed into a, a military program. But largely India's policy in the initial years was aimed at uh, trying to strive for nuclear disarmament, global nuclear disarmament. And uh, Prime Minister Nehru, for example, was a big votary of this and he pushed uh, India uh, towards taking very strong positions on the question of nuclear disarmament. And, and then uh, in 1968, when the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty was being executed, was, was coming into operation, India decided, India, and in, in fact India led the campaign against uh, NPT because India argued that NPT is fundamentally flawed. 
It was after the Second World War that the atomic nations divided the world into two groups by signing a non-proliferation treaty. Under this, there were countries equipped with nuclear weapons and some without nuclear weapons. Following the discriminatory policy of the international atomic countries, India initiated its efforts to become rich in atomic energy. For this, Dr. Homi Jahangir Bhabha, father of India's nuclear program, laid the foundation of the Institute of Fundamental Research in 1945. But the actual work in this direction began after the India-China War in 1962. In 1964, China raised India's concerns by conducting nuclear tests. After this, India changed its nuclear policy and intensified its efforts to make nuclear power. In 1965, the war between India and Pakistan further strengthened this need. And in 1974, under the leadership of the then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi, India conducted its first nuclear test. After the nuclear test, India said that its nuclear program and policy is for a peaceful purpose. However, these tests took everyone by surprise. India became the first country to become a nuclear power after the five great world powers. However, there was no major change in India's nuclear policy from 1974 to 1998. But during this period, other nuclear power-rich nations, including the United States, pressurized India to sign the Non-Proliferation Treaty 1968 and CTBT or Comprehensive Nuclear Test Ban Treaty 1993. But India refused to sign this discriminatory policy. This treaty only prohibits non-nuclear nations. Similarly, India refused to sign CTBT. With the development of missiles starting in 1980s, there has been a significant change in India's nuclear policy. India reached a turning point with increasing its space-related capabilities along with the development of missiles. When Atal Bihari Vajpayee became the Prime Minister in 1998, he considered national security as a necessity and proposed to make India a great nuclear power. Within two months of taking charge, he directed nuclear scientists to prepare for a second nuclear test. It was on May 11th and May 13th in 1998 that India conducted its second nuclear test in Pokhran. During this time, a total of five nuclear devices were tested. After this, India announced its nuclear policy in 2003. India has a doctrine of credible minimum deterrence. India also took a pledge of no first use or NFU, a pledge to not use nuclear weapons as a means of warfare unless first attacked by an adversary using nuclear weapons. Earlier, the concept had also been applied to chemical and biological warfare. But in response to a nuclear attack, India will surely give a befitting reply. India has got a very peculiar situation where both its adversaries, China as well as Pakistan, have got well-developed nuclear weapon programs. So under these circumstances, in order to deter them, India has got no other option but to have its own nuclear weapon program. And from that perspective, India has declared this policy. And on top of it, India will not use nuclear weapons against the adversaries as a first go. So until and unless India is not attacked by the adversaries by using nuclear weapons, India will not venture into even thinking of using nuclear weapons. So from that perspective, I will say that India's policy is more of a deterrence in nature. Although India is not a member of the Nuclear Non-Proliferation Treaty, many countries have a nuclear deal with India. It allows India to buy nuclear technology and materials legally from the international market. It shows India's reliability when it comes to military and civil nuclear programs. Today, India has become a member of the Missile Technology Control Regime or MTCR, the Wasinar Arrangement and the Australia Group. This will help India to strongly claim its entry into the nuclear supplies group. The United States, France, Germany and several other countries have strongly supported India's claim. However, China is still opposed to India becoming a member of the NSG. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. India's nuclear program dates back to the year of its independence. In 1947, India began to work on structuring its nuclear energy program to be used for peaceful purposes.
India's first Prime Minister Jawaharlal Nehru's keen interest in heavy industries, energy institutions and scientific development led to the formation of Atomic Energy Commission in 1948 to meet the country's energy requirements. It also set in motion development of India's nuclear policy program. We have the capability now to uh, not only ha we have missiles, we have um, fighter jets, we also now are working towards uh, submarines and I think the large, the, the push that India is giving to its submarine program, nuclear submarine program is largely because we want uh, to rely on a second strike capability uh, and that is the best way to have a secure, stable second strike capability is if you have nuclear weapons or nuclear, uh, on submarines and that is why I think the push will be there for India in the, in the coming years to uh, build the naval arm of its nuclear program more robustly because that gives you uh, the most credible uh, second strike capability vis-a-vis -vis the two adversaries that we have on the world. The Department of Atomic Energy was established in 1954 to implement India's nuclear policy. In 1957, India established the first nuclear research centre in Trombe near Mumbai. Ten years later, the centre was rechristened as Bhabha Atomic Research Centre. BARC is India's top national institute of research and development on nuclear energy in the country. India's first display of nuclear might came with Pokhran first, a test that invited severe criticism from the world, but it also showed the determination of former Prime Minister Indira Gandhi on this subject. There is nothing called military or civilian as far as nuclear weapons are concerned. As far as nuclear weapons are concerned, they are the strategic weapons. Uh, they are neither in the hands of military or neither in the hands of civilian forces. You have got a total infrastructure which has been developed, which is under Prime Minister of India. As far as armed forces are concerned, they are only expected to deliver the nuclear weapons if the need arises. So from that point of view, India's entire nuclear program is, India being a democratic country, India's entire nuclear program is under India's civilian leadership. 24 years later, India conducted its second nuclear test in Pokhran on 11th and 13th May 1998. With this, India achieved the ability to create nuclear weapons and thermonuclear devices. At present, India is self-sufficient in the field of nuclear science and technology. This includes military and civilian use of atomic power. And in, in fact, India led the campaign against uh, NPT because India argued that NPT is fundamentally flawed. It divides the world into nuclear haves and have-nots and therefore such a discriminatory treaty was not acceptable to India. So India was became one of the few countries, in fact, just the third, uh, first country in fact, that uh, argued that it would not sign the NPT. Uh, and uh, along with uh, Pakistan followed India and did not sign the NPT and Israel also did not sign the NPT. So you had these three countries that basically were outside the NPT framework. But India took a very principled position that this is something that they would like to, uh, they would not like to be a part of. At the same time, arguing for universal, global, verifiable disarmament. The Department of Atomic Energy has five research centers. These include the Bhabha Atomic Research Center in Mumbai, the Indira Gandhi Atomic Research Center in Kalpakkam, the Advanced Technology Center in Indore, the Variable Energy Cyclotron Center in Kolkata and Atomic Minerals Direct Trade for Exploration and Research in Hyderabad. 22 nuclear power reactors running in the country are generating about 7000 megawatt of electricity. Work on 11 more nuclear reactors is underway and once completed, India will be able to produce 8000 megawatt of additional power. With Leena Sharma, Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. So over the years, India has built a strong missile defense system. In fact, it is believed to have the fastest growing missile program in the world. Here's a timeline tracking the development of this program. India started its missile development program in the 1960s. In 1982, Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam accelerated the effort and gave it a new dimension under the Integrated Guided Missile Development Program. The IGMDP is one of India's most successful defence research projects. It was successfully completed in January 2008 after all Indian missiles Prithvi, Akash, Trishul, Nag and Agni were successfully tested and inducted by the armed forces. In May 1989, India successfully test-fired medium-range ballistic missile Agni-1 and joined an exclusive club of countries 
that had the ability both to build a nuclear weapon and deliver it over long distances. Besides Agni-1, India also possesses the intermediate-range ballistic missiles Agni-2, Agni-3 and Agni-4. The most advanced nuclear-capable intercontinental ballistic missile Agni-5 was launched this January. With a strike range of about 5,000 to 8,000 kilometers, Agni-5 is meant to provide the country with a second strike capability. India has also been working on a next-generation ICBM, the Agni-6, a four-stage missile with a maneuverable re-entry capability. It can hit targets located even beyond 10,000 kilometers. India has developed nuclear weapons. India is satisfied that yes, it has got nuclear weapons. And India is in the process of developing the weapon delivery platforms. Already India has successfully developed its missile system. India has got missiles like Agni-5, which are intercontinental ballistic missiles, which can reach to a distance of more than 5,000 kilometers also. India has got aircrafts which can carry nuclear warheads. In addition, there are the Prithvi class of ballistic missiles that make up most of India's arsenal of short-range ballistic missiles. These missiles have steadily improved their range from the 150km Prithvi-1 to the 350km Prithvi-3 and have progressed from liquid fuel to solid fuel. They are also road mobile, which means they can be deployed with manoeuvring forces. The Dhanush has been developed as a naval variant of the Prithvi ballistic missile system. It can fire modified versions of Prithvi-2 or Prithvi-3. Medium-range mobile surface-to-air missile defense system Akash was developed in 1990. It has the capability to neutralize aerial targets like fighter jets, cruise missiles and air-to-surface missiles and ballistic missiles. India also boasts of the BrahMos supersonic cruise missile system. Jointly developed by India and Russia, the BrahMos is a short-range, ramjet-powered, single-warhead supersonic anti-ship land-attack cruise missile. It is the fastest supersonic cruise missile in the world and the fastest anti-ship cruise missile in operation. It carries a 200 to 300 kilo explosive semi-armor piercing warhead or a 250 kilo sub-ammunition warhead. It can be launched from a vertical launch system, a ramp launcher or alternatively from the air. BrahMos 2 is the second of the BrahMos series of cruise missiles. It is expected to have a range of 450 kilometers. The BrahMos missiles have been operationalized in the Indian Army and Navy and are being developed for the Air Force. The indigenous Nirbhay cruise missile system is under development and testing. Set to be capable of being launched from air, sea and land, it is designed to carry nuclear payloads and is compared to US Stormhawk missile. Uh, India's nuclear policy is a defensive policy where India has, uh, I will use the word, produced nuclear weapons and weapon delivery platforms in order to ensure that we have got a sufficient deterrence mechanism available. So India's policy is to tell to its adversaries that we have got a well-developed nuclear weapons. We will be able to use the nuclear weapons. India also developed the Trishul missile as part of its integrated guided missile development program. It can also be used as an anti-sea skimmer from a ship against low-flying attacking missiles. Besides, the Shaurya missile was also developed by the DRDO for use by the Indian Armed Forces. It is a hypersonic surface-to-surface -surface tactical missile and has a range of 700 kilometers. It is capable of carrying a payload of one-ton conventional or nuclear warhead. The K family of missiles, named after former president and scientist Dr. APJ Abdul Kalam, is a series of submarine-launched ballistic missiles to boost India's second strike capabilities and also augment its nuclear deterrence. These missiles are said to be faster, lighter and stealthier than their Agni missile counterparts. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. Not only nuclear weapons or land-based ballistic missiles, the Indian Navy has also indigenously built a nuclear submarine, INS Arihan. With nuclear-tipped missiles, it gives India a sure second strike capability. The INS Arihant is the first indigenously built submersible nuclear submarine built with assistance from the Russian technology. INS Arihant, the lead ship of India's nuclear-powered ballistic missile submarines, was launched on 26th of July 2009, Vijay Divas, by then Prime Minister of India, Dr. Manmohan Singh. After extensive sea trials, Arihant was ready for operations on 23rd February 2016 and was commissioned in August 2016. Recently, INS Arihant got the K-15 Sagrika BO-5 nuclear-tipped missiles in its arsenal, bolstering India's second strike capability. 
that's our naval arm of, of, uh, of uh, the nuclear infrastructure that we have. And that is something that uh, uh, India is beginning to establish. It's not yet fully established. But we are gradually moving to a phase where uh, Arihant and others will give us a second strike capability in the nuclear realm. We have missiles, uh, for example, we are de developing uh, intercontinental uh, ICBM uh, Agni-5, which will also be very strong deterrent. And that would give us this reassurance that, um, that are, uh, you know, those who may decide to target us would realize that we have the capability to, uh, to uh, retaliate. Arihant has four vertical launch tubes that can carry 12 smaller K-15 missiles or four larger K-4 missiles. While K-15 missiles can hit targets over 700 kilometers away, the K-4 has a longer range of 3,500 kilometers. In the successful trials of INS Arihant, numerous critical technologies were tested successfully that paved the way for developing other long-range strategic missiles and has the potential to be launched from submarine, ship, as well as land. Bureau Report, Rajya Sabha TV. And that's it from us in this edition of India. Thanks for watching.